بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد today بإذن الله is a continuation after a long break from the Eid holidays um, so inshallah we'll continue just to review uh, the portion that we were on on the four principles uh, was the the third one so if you go back I just want to refresh people's memory so it was here let's get the yeah so it was the third principle al qaida al thalitha anna nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam dhahara ala unasin mutafarriqin fi ibadatihim minhum man ya'budu al malaika wa minhum man ya'budu al anbiya wa salihin wa minhum man ya'budu al ahjar wal ashja wal ahsh أشجار وما منهم من يعبد الشمس والقمر وقاتلهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم يفرق بينهم. which was the third principle was that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was uh, around a people who were differed in their worship. some of them used to worship the angels. some of them used to worship the prophets and righteous people. we went through that in the last lesson. and some of them worship uh, trees and stones. We're going to go through that in this lesson. And from them also those who worship the sun and the moon. We went through that last lesson. And with all that, he fought against the Prophet Sallallahu fought against him, against them, the Mushrikeen, who worshipped all these things. And he didn't differentiate between them. So that was the point. So going back to uh, today's lesson, where we stopped, we completed the... Uh, the righteous people as well. That was the last place that we stopped, and we we're on now. Uh, so we did the Shams and Qamar, the sun and the moon that they used to worship as well. And today, in our times as well, we still get those who worship the sun. Uh, you know, the the winter uh, winter solstice or the summer solstice, and uh, the you know these uh, pagans, uh, Wiccan, whatever they call, there's some outrightly claim to worship Shaitan as well, and they don't. Feel no shame about that, Allah Musta'an. So here, let me just get that. Yeah, there it was. So the Shaykh, uh, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wa Salatu Wa Salam, Ala Rasuli, Wa Sahbihi Ajma'een. We continue now from here. Adaleel, Ala Ahjar, Wal Ahjar, Qawluhu Ta'ala, Afara'aytum Allata Wal Uzza, Wal Uzza, Wa Manata Thalitha Al Ukhra. So here the, the Shaykh, he says, and the proof for the people worshipping stones and trees is the statement of Allah, the Most High. Let's get that uh, that we've got here. One second. Let me just check. Uh, is that showing? One second. I'm just going to see if, it, if this is showing. Yeah, so so here we just read here from uh, the proof of the worship of the the stones and trees. So Allah mentions in the meaning of the uh, ayah is, have you seen, uh, have you then considered Allah and Al-Uzza, Uzza, two idols of the pagan Arabs? And Manat, another idol of the pagan Arabs, the other, the third. Have you considered them that they were worshipped? So here, um, the Sheikh goes into saying, "Qaluhu wa dalil ahjar wal ahjar ila ila akhiri." Uh, fi hadi fi hadi al aya dalil an hunaka man yabud al ahjar wal ahjar min al mushrikin. So the Sheikh mentions that the proof the Sheikh mentions here is that the uh, in this, you know, uh, is a proof that the disbelievers uh, used to worship the stones and the trees from the polytheists at the time of the Prophet. ﷺ. So much so that I remember one statement I was reading one of the uh, books of the scholars who mentioning Sira. At one time, and this is connected to this, they would take stones to make the campfire. And once, you know, and if you know if anyone's made a fire out in the open. They put the st stone there so that the fire doesn't spread from that particular region. 
So once the, the fire will be finished, they take it, take them stones and then worship them. Subhanallah. How strange is the people's affairs, the disbelievers. So فَقَوْلُهُ أَفَرَعَيْتُمْ So this, the statement of Allah, have you seen? هَذَا إِسْتِفْهَامَ الْإِنْكَارِ أَيْ أَخْبَرُونِي مِنْ مِنْ بَابِ إِسْتِفْهَامَ الْإِنْكَارِ وَتَوْبِيخِ So here, the have you seen them? Is the the question is used as a uh, how do you say as a uh, as a uh, negation or a question of uh, denial, interrogative denial, and uh, it's also as a reprimand, tawbih. So it's also as a reprimand to the people. Allat. So have you seen them who worship these as a as in a negative for a uh, question, yeah? So that they're doing something reprehensible and as a rebuke. Allat bi takhfif ta, meaning that the ta is light, yeah? So uh, it's pronounced Allat. Ismu sanam fi ta'if. So it was a name of an idol that was worshipped in ta'if. And if any one of you travelled for Hajj Umrah, you would know that ta'if is just right outside of Mecca, yeah? Wa huwa ibara and Sakhra Mankusha Aleha Baytun Mabniun Wa Alehi Satair Yudahi El Kaba Wa Hau Lahu Saha Wa Indahu Sadana Kanu Yabaduna Ha Binduni La Zawajel Wa Hia and Li Thakif Wama Wama Wa Lahum Min Al Kabail Yufahiruna Biha. So the Sheikh mentions here. That it was a name of an idol that was in Taif, just outside of Mecca. And this, uh, uh, so, Lat, it was, an, you know, it was a word or, to describe a stone that was carved. Yeah? And uh, it was, upon it, was a, a house was built over it. Yeah? So this stone, uh, this carved stone, they built a house over it. And above it were curtains, and it was in similar uh, size as the Kaaba, yeah. And around it was a square, like a plaza, like a square, like a field, uh, arena around it, and it had like a gatekeeping uh, gate, gates to it, and uh, the people used to worship it, other than Allah. From other than Allah, they used to worship this idol, yeah. And uh, and uh, you know, and they used to, you know, because the people were very skillful in the building this building over it, and uh, they used to, you know, support uh, this with whatever repair it needed from the tribes that were around it, and they used to boast about it that they had this idol lat, and that they had this structure built around it, and also this lat in the Quran is also read with what. أَفَرَعَيْتُمْ أَلَّاتَ With a shadda. Yeah, with a shadda. أَلَّاتَ Yeah. So with tashdeed ta, with a shadda on the ta. So now this one, so there's, you know, as you know, there's certain ways that you can read the Qur'an and they're all permissible. Yeah. And they're all the revelation from uh, from Allah. So this is another reading with the shadda on the ta. It is the the is derived from the word, verb letta yaluttu yeah and that means to pound or uh, grind something yeah and it indicates that it was showing that it was a, maj, uh, a man yeah so with this letta this reading indicates that it was a righteous man rajulun salihun kana yaluttu as-sawiq or yut'imu al-hujjaj. So he used to be a righteous man that used to grind down barley porridge, yeah, into a porridge type of, uh, you know, uh, mixture, and he would feed, feed the people who were making hajj. And remember, hajj was started at the time that we know that Ibrahim alayhi salam or Ismail alayhi salam built the Kaaba. Ismail alayhi salam was the forefather of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So the Arabs, they used to perform the Hajj, and it was they were upon Tawheed until 
many generations went after Ismail and his, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, his progeny, many of them, after many, uh, you know, generations went, uh, Amr bin Hawai, he was one of the leaders of uh, the Arabs at that time. He went to Syria. He liked the people worshipping idols and, uh, you know, and he went to, uh, uh, is mentioned in some of the other school, books of the uh, Sheikh Muhammad al Abdul Wahab uh, and other scholars that he went to these uh, um, people uh, who t- claim to uh, clairvoyance and claim to you know know the umseen or they used to talk talk with the jinn and uh, they, he liked that uh, and the, that they used to worship idols so then they directed him towards uh, Jeddah and then he uncovered some of the idols from the time of Nuh alayhi salam that were washed up. So he digged up there with the aid of the jinn and then he spread those upon the idol, among the Arabs. And the Prophet alayhi salam mentioned in a narration that he saw him and his intestines being, you know, uh, out and he was being punished. And because he revived uh, idol worship in the Arabian Peninsula. So the Arabs were upon Haq. So this man, you might be a righteous man, yeah, uh, and he used to uh, grind barley and used to feed the hujjaj, which is a righteous action. For example, someone's coming, uh, Hajj or Umrah, you'll see little kids now, they'll give out dates, water, whatever you give, it's a sadaqah, yeah. So when this person, uh, so when he died, they built upon his grave a house. And this is why it is forbidden as well, one of the reasons why, that it's forbidden to build large structures over graves, huh? So that is not a way uh, for people to go towards worshipping that individual. So, وَأَرْخُوا عَلَيْهِ سَتَائِرُ And they hung over it curtains. فَسَارُوا يَعْبَدُونَهُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Then after a time, they, they began to uh, worship him other than Allah Azza wa Jal. هَذَا هُوَ أَلَّاد So this was Allah. Yeah. So a righteous person, as happened at the time of Nuh a.s. There were righteous people. And, uh, you know, uh, they, the people went over to the graves, they stood there, and then Shaitan appeared to them, advising them as a, as a righteous man, or you should build, if you want to, you know, remember, or build, build images or, for, or, or, you know, of them, or statues, and uh, they built that. Then when their people who passed away, their children, Shaitan came to them and said, oh, your fathers and mothers, they didn't used to, uh, you know, uh, you know, just just admire these righteous people. They actually used to worship them, and that's how worship, uh, idol worship, spread after t- ten centuries. You know, uh, between Adam and the, and that happening. So yeah, so that is the one of their way of the, uh, idol worship being spread. So that was Lat. As for Al Uzza, that, that that's mentioned in the Quran, Al Uzza Shajarat min min al Salam fi wadi. So that was in Ta'if. Yeah, and there's another place. There's a wali between, uh, it's called Nakhla, Wadi Nakhla. So it's a wali between Mecca and Ta'if that this Uzza is. And it's, uh, it's made out of uh, trees from uh, Acacia. Acacia, I don't know what type of tree that is. But yeah, it's a type of uh, tree that, that this. this uh, I, these these uh, idols was made from. Hawlaha bina'a wa sata'ir. So around this uh, tree, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a building uh, and uh, curtains. Indaha sadana. And also it has some gates to it. And inside it, wa fiha shayateen yukallamun nas And inside these gates, there were uh, devils, you know, jinn, who used to speak to the people. وَيَذُنُّ الْجُحَالَ أَنَّ هَذَا الَّذِي يُكَلِّمُهُمْ هُوَ هُوَ نَفْسُ هَذِهِ شَجْرَةً أَوْ هَذَا الْبَيْتَ الَّذِي بَنُوهُ مَا أَنَّ الَّذِي تَكَلَّمَهُمْ هِيَ أَشَيَاطِينَ لِتُضِلَّهُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكَانَ هَذَا سَنَمْ لِقُرَيْشٍ وَأَحْلَى مَكَّةٍ وَمَنْ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُمْ So the Shaykh mentions that uh, these shayateen they used to speak to the people, and the people, the and the ignorant people, they used to think that the the one who's speaking is this tree that they used to call Uzza, yeah, or uh, or, or this house that they built, yeah, or with with that this 
while, while in reality it was the shayati, the devils. They used to do this to misguide the people from the right path, the path of Allah. And this is, uh, uh, and this was the uh, idol that the Quraysh and the people of Mecca and the, those around them used to worship. Uzza. So he used to worship a tree. Yeah? And the devils used to entice the people and the devils are happy. Who are the devils? You know, they are happy that people they disbelieve and obviously they're following their the leader, the commander, Iblis. Yeah? And he made a promise that to misguide the people who come from in front, behind, left and right to attack them. But alhamdulillah, we know if we uh, stick to the Quran and Sunnah, we will be protected. Huh? We we'll be get, and if we stick, uh, we pray that Allah make make makes us die upon that. But anyway, that it reminds you of a certain time in, in here now. It is the Christians and the Hindus, where certain devils they'll make tears come out of certain statues and stuff like this and these. All the the the, the priests will do it themselves just to get more money coming in the donations and attendance, just to fool the people. While these idols and these things cannot benefit, no harm. So that was Al Uzza. So the first one was stone. Yeah, it was a righteous man, and then they, they built a stone, in, uh, you know, and they carved up, and people used to worship. The second one was a tree. Yeah, and the third one is what Manat. Uh, what Manat? Sakhra kabira fi makan yaqa u qariba min al Jabal Qudayd bayna Makkah wal Madina. So this third one was also a stone that was huge in size. And it, it was located close to the, the mountain of Qudayd. And that mountain was between, is between Mecca and Medina. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, so it was a bit closer to Medina and the uh, the Khuza and Aus and Khazraj, they were tribe, uh, Aus and Khazraj especially, the two tribes used to fight each other. They, they, they later became the Ansar, the Muslims of Medina. So then people used to worship this tree. Yeah, so this rock, this huge rock. And they used to, as remember, the Hajj was still remained from the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But when Amr bin Luhawai, he spread the pagan worship, what happened? Uh, with the with the with the uh, idols, the people uh, they still used to perform Hajj, but they used to perform it with the idols in the Kaaba and all sorts of weird acts. So the Arabs still used to perform Hajj. So when they used to go out and wear the ihram, they used to wear it around where this where this big stone or rock was, yeah, which was Manat, and they used to worship other than Allah. So uh, so we have uh, Mawaqit. If you go on to Hajj Umrah, you, wear, you have to wear the ikhram for. Uh, from, so these uh, tribes used to wear it from where this rock was. فَهَذِهِ الْأَسْنَامُ الثَّلَاثَةِ هِيَ أَكْبَرْ أَسْنَامَ الْعَرَبِ So these three were the greatest of the idols of the, uh, of, the of the Arabs. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَفَرَعَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةَ وَمَنَاتَ Allah the Most High said, uh, which we read, was... Uh, have you uh, have you then considered Allah and Al Uzza, two of the idol uh, pagans of the uh, two of the idols of the pagan Arabs, and Manat, another idol of the uh, Arabs, uh, the other third? Hal agnatakum shayan, hal nafatakum shayan, hal nasar, hal nasaratakum, hal kanat tuhlik wa tarzuk. So the Sheikh mentions, did these did these benefit anything, these idols? Did they benefit you or anyone, uh, these idols, do they benefit? Or did they help uh, or rescue anyone, you know, give them the uh, victory? No. And uh, did, the, did these idols create or give sustenance or give life or death? So what, what do the people or what do you find in them? 
and this is a question this this uh, this uh, questioning is uh, as we said it's a question of uh, of uh, inter it's like an interrogative denial and a reprimand uh, and a rebuke yeah for those who do that uh, and it's also uh, a warning uh, for those who uh, have uh, uh, you know uh, intellect uh, that they should return uh, to the senses yeah for for hadi innama here so this these are only stones and trees and they have no benefit and no harm they are created yeah so they are created so this is what the ayah it came as a uh, reprimand for these people uh, so that they can take uh, heed and for us as well so walam walam ja Allahu bil Islam wa fataha Rasul Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Makkah al Musharrafa arsal al Mughira Mughira ibn Shubba wa Abu Sufyan ibn Harb ila al Lat. So this is uh, so when uh, when Allah came with Islam, gave us Islam, and he and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he conquered Makkah. Remember he was in Makkah first. 13 years calling to Tawheed, to worship Allah alone. And then he was given permission to make Hijrah because of the harms and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the ill treatment uh, that they received from the Quraysh. And they even tried to kill him just before he leave, left. And then when he made Hijrah to Medina, he stayed there a number of years until he uh, came back and he conquered Mecca. And Mecca, and he, and he freed it with the permission of Allah from all that idols were destroyed. And it became a place of Islam again. Yeah. So the when when the Prophet ﷺ conquered the Honorable uh, Mecca, and uh, he sent Mughira bin Shu'bah, one of the one of the companions, and Abu Sufyan bin Harb, another companion, to Lat. And we mentioned Lat was the stone sculpture carved and named after the after that man who used to you know give the pilgrims uh, food from Krush Bali porridge and that was in Taif. So them two companions they destroyed it. Yeah. With the, which was according to the command of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was commanded by Allah. So then the Prophet Arsala Khalid bin Walid il al Uzza Fahadamaha wa kata al Ashjar wa katal al Jinniya al Latikan fiha to khati banas wa to dillahum uh, so here I just want to mention here is another one where the Prophet ﷺ commanded Khalid bin Walid and many people know Khalid bin Walid was a noble companion sometimes called the sword of Allah and all sorts of other nicknames that he's given as an honor because he was very great in battle Alhamdulillah and the Prophet ﷺ sent him to Uzza yeah and Uzza and uh, so that was a big, uh, as we mentioned, uh, which one was Uzza? Al Uzza, yeah, it was a tree. So Uzza was a tree. So uh, where there was a building around it as well. So the Khalib, Ali, Khalib bin Walid was sent to Uzza to destroy it. Uh, so he destroyed it and then he cut the tree and he killed the jinn, female jinn that was in it. I used to call the people, you know, and uh, uh, used to talk to the people, and uh, you know, uh, and you know, talk to them, address them to misguide them. So he, uh, so he, uh, so he was wiped out until his end. Yeah. So there was no trace of it. Alhamdulillah. And then he, uh, I'm going to come back to this. There's a story. Uh, we we'll go more detail. I want to benefit, and then we'll continue, inshallah. And then I uh, just mentioned another one. Arsal Ali. Ali ibn Abi Talib ila manat fahadamaha wa mahaha wa ma ankadat nafsaha fa ma ankadat nafs nafsuha fa kayfa tunkidu ahlaha wa ubadaha afara'aytum allata wal uzza wa manat al thalitha al ukhra ayna dahabat hal nafa'atkum hal mana'at nafsuha min junud min junud Allah wa juyush al muwahhidin so and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ali ibn Talib yeah, his uh, cousin and uh, his son-in-law, the uh, husband of uh, Fatima radiallahu anha, the father of uh, Hassan Hussein, to Manat, to the idol. Yeah, and he destroyed it and he wiped it out of existence. And uh, the Sheikh he asked, 
uh, these idols weren't able to save themselves. So how can they save anyone else from uh, their worshippers? So then the, uh, the Sheikh mentioned again, have you uh, mentioned the ayah again? Uh, then have you considered, then have you considered uh, Lat al-Uzza and Manat, uh, the, th- the other, the third? Uh, so where have they gone? They've been destroyed. Did they benefit? Uh, did they prevent uh, themselves, uh, you know, uh, from being destroyed from the, you know, from the army of Allah? Um, from the you know the soldiers of uh, the, the 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 army of uh, uh, the monotheists, the people of Tawheed, no. So فهذا فهذا فيه دليل على أن هناك من يعبد الأشجار والأحجار بل إن هذه الأصنام الثلاثة كانت هي أكبر أصن أصنامهم ومع هذا ما الله من الوجود وما دفعت أنها ولا نفعت أحلها فقد غزاهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقاتلهم ولم تمنعهم أصنامهم فهذا فيه ما استدل له الشيخ رحمه الله أن هناك من يعبد الأحجار والأشجار. so then the sheikh he said so in this is a proof that there were people at the time of the prophet who used to worship trees and stones uh, and rather these three uh, big idols uh, they were the most greatest of them, uh, and with that, Allah wiped them out uh, from existence, and they could not uh, push away uh, any harm to themselves, and uh, they couldn't uh, or uh, push away any harm or any um, give any benefit to the people who used to worship. Uh, indeed, uh, the Prophet ﷺ fought wars against the Mushrikeen, and he, uh, he uh, fought them, uh, fought them. And these idols were not able to uh, prevent the Muslims from dece- uh, defeating uh, the, the worshippers of these idols. Uh, so this is a proof that the Sheikh used, may Allah, uh, may Allah miss if you're upon him, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, that the, the people at that time used to worship trees and stones. So uh, then, one second. Then the Sheikh said, Ya Subhanallah, Bashir, Ukala, Ya Badun al Ashjar, Wala Hajar, Al Jamida, Alati, Laysa Fiha, Okul, Walaysa Fiha, Haraka, Wala, Haya, Ena Okul, Bashir, Ta'al Allahu, Amma Yakuluna, Aluun Kabir. So he said, Oh Subhanallah, uh, the, the people of, uh, who have intelligence, uh, they, they worship these uh, trees. And these uh, stones uh, that are solid, you know, they're, they're lifeless, uh, that don't have any, uh, the, the, these objects themselves don't have any intelligence and they do not have any movement or any life. Where the, where are the, you know, the intelligence of the people? Uh, Allah is more, is far above what they, you know, uh, what they ascribe to him or what they, do, what they say. Uh, in regards to uh, ascribing, you know, partners with Allah. So then, uh, so I just, uh, we're going to go on to Hadith, Waqid al uh inshallah. And then I'm going to return back to that narration that uh, mentioned about Khalid bin Walid going, we're just over here, we mentioned Khalid bin Walid was sent uh, to Uzza, the idol, was a tree. And uh, you know what happened uh, There's a very interesting story So inshallah I want to mention that as well So first of all we're going to uh, explain this hadith Finish this and go back to that So uh, then the Sheikh he said Hadith Abi Waqid al-Layfi Radiyallahu anhu Qala Kharajna ma'a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ila hunayn Wa nahnu Khudatha Ahdin Bi kufr Wa lil mushrikina Sidratun Ya'kufuna يأكفون عندها وينوتون بها أسلحتهم يقال لها ذات أنوات فمررنا بسدرة فقلنا يا رسول الله اجعل لنا ذات أنوات كما لهم ذات أنوات الحديث So this hadith is of a companion Abu Waqid al-Layfi May Allah be pleased with him I'm pleased with all the companions yeah. uh, He said that we 
we, we we went out with the Prophet Sallallahu to Hunayn and Hunayn was a place just outside of Mecca and we were uh, new to Islam they just left Kufr they've just become Muslim newly and there, there used to be for the disbelievers a tree Sidra you, you know Sidra honey that tree it's called a low tree so uh, they used to have the low tree and they used to hang their weapons on there yeah well, you know, so basically they used to uh, stand there yeah, and they used to hang their weapons there and we'll go why they used to do that, we'll explain that and they used to call these tre- that tree that and what so we, they, he's saying that, so when we went out with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we're near Hunayn and we're near we passed by a, a low tree, Sidra so we said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam oh Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah Make for us a zat and what you know, like the disbelievers have got this tree that they hang their weapons on. Make for us like them a zat and what and what. So then the sheikh is going to explain this. So then the sheikh says, "An Abi Waqid." He repeats that hadith. Wa kana mimman aslam am al fat ala mashhur sana al thaman min al hijra. So they were. This was. He was. He became Muslim. In the year of the conquest of Mecca, and that was uh, famously said, I thought it was the eighth year of Hijrah. So, yeah, so it was just before the tenth year of Hijrah was complete, and before the death of the Prophet, two years before the death of the Prophet. You call laha that and what? So, he was said to that and what? Well, and what? Jam naut. So, and what is a plural of naut? Well, who are And that is hanging. أي ذات التعليق يؤلقون بها أسلعتم لتبارك بها. so it was mentioned note or anwat and that means to hang and meaning that the tree of hanging where people would hang their weapons so their swords, spears, whatever that weapons were at that time. why was it done? it was done to get what uh, baraka, your blessings. so فقال فقال بعض الصحابة الذين أسلموا قريبا ولم يعرفوا التوحيد تماما. So who said this? So some of the Sahaba, those people who became Muslim, new Muslims, and they didn't know Tawheed completely. So they just entered Islam. So this is the importance of learning Tawheed. So even the Sahaba at this time made a mistake. But did some people use this as a as a, as a way here yeah, to prove mistakes? No. The Sahaba learn after that. So this was a, a teachable moment, obviously, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught them. So they said, Ijal lana that and what kama lahum that and what. They said, make for us, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, that and what, a tree for hanging, a weapon and to get barakah from, like you, uh, like they have a tree. وَهَذِهِ بَلِيَّةُ الْتَقْلِيدِ وَالتَّشَبُّهُ وَهِيَ مِنْ أَعْذُمُ الْبَلَايَا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ تَعَجُّبَ النَّبِي صَلَّى وقال الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أعجبه شيء أو استنكر شيئا فإنه يكبر أو يقول سبحان الله ويكرر ذلك. so the, uh, the sheikh he said this is a great misfortune of imitating people and resembling people and he is from the greatest of tribulations and misfortunes. Because with that, uh, for, um, uh, with that, the Prophet ﷺ was astonished by this, what, what was happening. And he said, Allah Akbar three times. Yeah. For, for, from the statement, that how heavy that statement was, create for us uh, a, a tree that we can seek blessings from. So the Prophet ﷺ, he would only say Allah Akbar a few times, like three times, or, or, uh, or uh, Subhanallah. And we'll repeat that if something he liked or if something that he hated or detested. Yeah, so he would say that and repeat it. So in this case, obviously, he didn't like it. He hated what they said. Then he wanted the Prophet some in the sunan. So we go to the hadith. There's a full hadith on this. So if we go back uh, at, the, at the bottom of the margin, he says, Tirmidhi took this hadith out. And this is in the Fi al-Fitan. 
yeah so it's in the uh, chapter of fit and trials ba ma ja'a li li la tarkabanna sunan man kana qablakum meaning it's the hadith of you will follow the the sunnah of those who uh, who preceded you yeah so it's in the lengthy hadith so here it says innaha sunan ay at-turuq allati yasluqaha an-nas wa yaqtadi ba'dhum bi ba'd fa sabab alladhi hamalakum ala hadha huwa ittiba' sunan al-awwalin wa tashabbuh wa tashabbuh so the sheikh he says innaha sunan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said innaha sunan indeed it is what is the way sunan meaning to the ways uh, that that was uh, uh, the the the, the uh, people uh, tread upon and they follow one another and the reason uh, of the uh, uh, the reason for you saying this is following uh, the ways of the people and resembling the disbelievers so that's why it's meant in the maha indeed is the way the path of those before you so qultum so the sheikh uh, the prophet some said qultum you said walladhi nafsi bayadi so the prophet used to swear by his soul yeah uh, the, uh, you know uh, by allah sorry he didn't swear by his soul now billah this is why swear by allah you know but say wallahi but he said who whose hand my soul is in uh, meaning allah so he used to swear by allah uh, كَمَا قَالَتْ بَنُوْ إِسْرَائِيلِ لِمُوسَى You said, like Banu Israel, who are the children of Israel? Uh, they were the Muslims. We don't say Jews, they were the Muslims. Who were the children of Ya'qub al yeah? uh, So Israel was another name for Ya'qub al -Islam. So they were the Muslims who said that to Musa, what they said to him, um, what did they say? Uh, اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجحلون. Uh, so here, uh, yeah, they said, he said, uh, they said, O oh Musa, make for us a god as they have gods. Yeah, so that's what the, uh, they said. So Musa عليه السلام لما تجاوز البحر بِبَيْ بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَأَغْرَقَ اللَّهَ أَدُوَهُمْ فِي فِيهِ وَهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ مَرُّوا عَلَى أُنَاسٍ يَأْكُفُونَ عَلَى أَثْنَامٍ لَهُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ فَقَالَ هَؤُلَاءِ لِمُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ إِجَلْ لَنَا إِلَهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَةٌ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ كَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ So then uh, the Sheikh he says that Musa عليه السلام we know who Musa عليه السلام is the Prophet um, when he uh, went past the sea, when the sea was split, uh, and uh, with with the uh, with the children of uh, Israel, uh, but Israel, uh, the Muslims, he took them out from Egypt, and they crossed over, uh, and then Allah, you know, drowned uh, the enemies, Pharaoh and his uh, people, uh, in that sea, and the, the people saw that. So look at that great. This great, you know, miracle that Allah has shown and saved him, and they've seen that the enemy is being drowned. So when they passed it by a few people now, yeah. So this is a lot of people said that it was the crossing, and they ended up in the north of Arabia, you know, uh, where Sinai is, and a bit further down, uh, maybe. So, uh, so they said uh, they passed it by people, and. Uh, uh, that were disbelievers, the polytheists, these worship idols. So these people, the Banu Israel, the Muslims, at that time they said to Isa, uh, Musa alayhi salam, make for us a god like they have gods. Uh, then he said what? Uh, he said, uh, whether you are people who know not the majesty and greatness of Allah. Yeah. So uh, th that's what was said here. So he uh, you know, denied the, uh, what they said and refuted what they said, uh, and uh, anchor alayhim qala in the haolai. What do you say? In the haolai, in the haolai, mutabbarum mahum fihi wabatilum ma kanu ya maloon. So Musa al Islam added, Well, these people will be destroyed for what for which they are engaged in idol worship, and all that they are doing is in vain. 
سو يعني باتل مينينغ اس باتل ويبتلوا ما كانوا يعملون يعني صالب لانه شرك بيكوز اي شرك قال اغير الله ابغيكم الها وهو فضلكم على العالمين سو الاعراف اندرس was for it. He said, shall I seek for you a God other than Allah while he has given you superiority over all of mankind and jinn of your time? So that was Surah Al-A'raf. So Ankara alay, alayhim. So the, he reprimanded and uh, he uh, refuted them, alayhi salatu salam. Uh, the, uh, the Prophet uh, Musa Kama anna nabiyyana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ankara ala ha'ulai The same way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Refuted uh, what these sahaba Who were new to Islam Remember they were new to Islam They didn't know Tawheed Walakin ha'ulai Wa ha'ulai lam yushriku Fabanu Israel Lamma qalu hadihi al-maqala Lam yushriku Liannahum lam yaf'alu Wa kathalika ha'ulai al-sahaba Law ittakhadu that and what لأشركوا ولكن الله حماهم لما نهاهم نبي نبيهم انتهوا وقالوا هذه المقالة عن عن الجهل ما قالوها عن تعمد فلما علموا أنها شرك انتهوا ولم ينفذوا ولم نفذوا لأشركوا بالله عز وجل. so the sheikh makes an important point here. so he said but these meaning the Muslims from the children of Israel, uh, Banu Israel, uh, who, who uh, at the time of Musa Islam, and these Sahaba, they didn't commit shirk. Why? Because Banu Israel, when they said this to, uh, speak, statement to Musa Islam, they didn't commit shirk because they didn't actually fall into it. They didn't actually, when Musa Islam uh, forbade them from that and uh, refuted them, they didn't do it. They learned from that. And uh, likewise, uh, the Sahaba, yeah, they didn't do it. But if they had done it, if they had taken a tree as, you know, a place of seeking blessings, and they, they would have done uh, shirk. They would have fallen into shirk. But Allah protected them from that. When, when uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi forbade them from that, they, fi- they, 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 uh, they finished. They didn't uh, ask about it any further. They knew that it was wrong, and they and they, they said uh, this is uh, this is a statement from Jahl. So they knew that it was a statement from the Jahliya, from the uh, days of ignorance. So and they didn't say ma They didn't say it intentionally. Yeah, they didn't say it intentionally. Falam. Uh, so when they knew that is shirk. فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا أَنَّهَا شِرْكٍ إِنْتَهُوا So when they knew a shirk, they stopped. وَلَمْ And they didn't carry out. And if they were to uh, carry out, they would have fallen into shirk with Allah, the Most High. So that's the important point. They didn't actually do it. Yeah. So when the Prophet told them, uh, uh, they, they, they didn't do it. فَشَاهِدْ مِنَ الْآيَةَ أَنَّ هُنَاكَ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ الْأَشْجَارِ So the point from the ayah is that though there are those from the people who worship trees. And we know even in here in the in the Western world, these uh, most of these people before Christianity in the West they used to wear ship uh, trees and forests and you know uh, the druids and also so these ones they used to worship and they still probably do a lot of them. And the Hunaka man ya abdul ashjar used to worship the trees. They and the haulai al mushrikina ittakhadu zat anwat because the disbelievers they took zat anwat a place to hang their weapons to get baraka. وحاول هؤلاء الصحابة الذين لم يتمكن العلم من قلوبهم حاولوا أن يتشبهوا بهم لولا أن الله حماهم برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So uh, the Sheikh he said uh, that uh, the 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 صحابة they tried. Uh, to you know, go get this uh, uh, zat and wat, yeah, uh, because uh, they won't, they won't, uh, you know, firm in, uh, they, they won't able or didn't have, they won't firm upon knowledge uh, in the heart, didn't have, uh, and they uh, tried to resemble uh, the disbelievers. Uh, so if it wasn't for Allah, 
defending the, uh, the, uh, the you know defending him with the prophet sallallahu they would have fallen into that yeah so uh, alhamdulillah allah uh, protected him from falling into that so uh, this shows the great uh, problem with resemble people a lot of people now resemble the disbelievers whether there is from their dress you know well, uh, there's like certain problems with certain ties and stuff like that, you know, where the Christians used to wear that and it was signifying Trinity. A lot of the Muslims don't know where a lot of the Muslims wear football jerseys and a lot of the football jer jerseys, especially in uh, countries like, for example, a lot of people support Brazil, England, uh, you know, Spain, and all these have the crosses on it and it's not permissible to wear the cross. Yeah. So uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of people fall into major sins, and a lot of them fall into shirk just by uh, imitating the disbelievers. So we should take a lesson from that. So then the shahid, and هناك من يتبرك بالأشجار ويأكف عندها والأكوف ما ما أنه البقاء عند عندها مدة تقرب إليها فالأكوف هو البقاء في المكان. So the point here that Sheikh Samin says is that there was people. Who used to seek blessings from the trees and used to stand uh, with them uh, at them. Uh, and akuf meaning uh, the akuf here, the standing here is to stay, remain in that place for a, main, uh, uh, a bit of time, uh, seeking nearness. So here is remaining in a place for a, uh, a period of time. So, for example, people say, "Oh, minute silence near uh, dead people's graves." No, you don't stand there. That's that's a form of worship. Yeah, to stand near graves for time, or stand near tree, you know, no, we we, we don't stand. Uh, that is a form of worship. Akuf, yeah. فدل فدل هذا على مسائل عظيمة. So the the Sheikh mentioned the benefits of this hadith. So al al مسألة أولى, the first uh, affair is خطر الجحل بالتوحيد. Is the what is the great danger of being ignorant of the issue of tawheed فإن من كان يجهل التوحيد هري أن يقع في شرك وهو لا يدري. So whoever is ignorant of tawheed, he he's able to fall into shirk and he does not even know. Because you, if you if you don't know something, it's easy to fall into. Yeah. ومن هنا يجب تعلم التوحيد. So from here, everyone is upon everyone. Who hears this to learn Tawheed? Uh, so, yeah, and to learn the opposite of Tawheed, which is Shirk. So that a person doesn't fall into it and he is upon uh, insight and clarity so that he, uh, that is, you know, he doesn't fall into it because of his ignorance. لا سيما إذا لا سي سيما إذا رأى من من يفعل ذلك فيحس فيحسبه حقا بسبب جحله ففيه خطر الجحل لا سيما في أمور القيدة. so yeah so especially if you see someone who fall fall into that uh, because uh, because of his ignorance. So there is, uh, you know, there, there is a great uh, danger of uh, ignorance, uh, especially in the uh, affairs of Aqidah. So it's upon us to learn Tawheed, yeah, so we know what, what we are required to do in terms of worship and learn the opposite, which is Shirk. So we know what we have to stay away from and also to learn the pr true belief when it comes to Allah, comes to Allah the Aqidah that we used to have. And when it comes to uh, the six pillars of Iman, yeah, uh, that we believe entirely what Allah's names and attributes, where is Allah above his throne, you know, we don't call upon any other one, uh, we don't give any share of worship to anyone, we believe the Prophet ﷺ truly, meaning not just mere statement, you follow his sunnah as well. Then the third end, the second benefit, في الحديث خطر تشبه بالمشركين. The second is the danger of resembling the disbelievers. وأنه قد يؤدي إلى شرك. And that can it can lead to شرك. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من تشبه بقوم فهو منهم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a hadith that is mentioned in Abu Dawood and في اللباس باب. So it's mentioned in a few of the narrations that whoever imitates the people is from them. 
So Allah protect us from uh, imitating the people, uh, the disbelievers. So it's not permissible to resemble the disbelievers. And Shaykh Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, was a famous scholar, died around 20 years ago or less than that. Uh, and he uh, mentioned that people only imitate those who they see are better than them. So Wallahi is a strange affair where the, where the disbelievers at the time the Muslims used to rule Andalus would resemble the Muslims and copy them, have beards and wear long, uh, you know, uh, uh, thobes uh, and learn the Arabic language. Now it's opposite where the Muslims are learning the language of the disbelievers and they're imitating them in their looks, whether it's clean shaven, whether it's, you know, uh, their uh, pants below, uh, the ankles and all, all sorts of others. And then the Masala Athalitha and the third affair, and the Taburuk Bilahjar wal Ahjar wal Ambiya Shirkun wa in Sumya bi Gairi Ismihi Leenna Hu Talabal Baraka bin Gairilla. So the third affair is that seeking blessings from stones or trees or from prophets is shirk. Yeah. Even though it's uh, you know it's called something else. They name it some or uh, tabarruk. Yeah, it's a uh, it's only tabarruk. No, it's shirk. Because he's seeking a blessing from other than Allah. وَمِنَ الْأَحْجَارِ وَالْأَحْجَارِ وَالْقَبُورِ وَالْأَدْرِحَ هَذَا الشِّرْكِ وَإِنْ سَمُّوا بِغَيْرِ إِسْمِ الشِّرْكِ So seeking blessings from uh, stones and trees and graves and uh, you know uh, places of uh, you know where they, where they bury, bury the uh, saints you know uh, so th- these are all what? These are all uh, they are all uh, so in our tombs and graves. They are all shirk. Yeah. So we'll stop there, inshallah. I just mentioned the. Uh, we'll go on, continue on the fourth point uh, next lesson. But I just want to mention the story that we we're mentioning about uh, when the Prophet Sallam he sent uh, Khalid bin Walid to destroy that idol, yeah, that tree that was worshipped. So we said, "Arsal Khalid bin Walid ila Uzza." So I'm just going to read uh, so uh, a side benefit from that. So we'll say and the Yeah. So I'm going to read and record it that Abu Tufail said, when the message of Allah conquered Mecca, he sent Khalid bin Walid to the area of Nakhla, where the idol of Al-Uzza was erected on three trees of a forest. Khalid cut the trees and approached the house, built around it and destroyed it. When he went back to the Prophet Sallallahu and informed him, of the story the Prophet said to him, go back and finish your mission, for you have not finished it. So the, so the Prophet sent, sent, sent him back. The Prophet Sallallahu knew. How did the Prophet Sallallahu know? Through Wahi. Yeah? Because he couldn't see that far. It wasn't, you know? No, it was what? It was uh, from Wahi. So Khali went back and when the custodians, the custodians who were also his servants of Uzza saw him, they started invoking, you making dua to this Uzza. When Khalid approached it, he found a naked woman whose hair was untidy, yeah, and who was throwing sand on her head. Yeah, so this is the jinn. And Khalid killed her with a sword and went back to the message of Allah who said to him, That was Al Uzza. Yeah, so it's a jinn. So, uh, subhanAllah, uh, that was the benefit I wanted to share there. Uh, inshallah, with that, we finish. Subhanakullah. Oh, one more point. Afwan. Uh, the last point I want to mention is next week, because uh, Sheikh Suleiman or Raheli Hafizullah is in uh, the UK, uh, will be attending the conference. So I advise everyone to, of you who is able to attend. There's uh, uh, is it the 28th and 29th in London and 30th and 31st Saturday, Sunday in Birmingham. So uh, I think I, I touched the fly previously in the group. So play, uh, please attend if you can. So there's no lesson next week. We'll be we'll continue the week after, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.